you've never stopped to ask yourself, why am I here? What does all of this mean? Do I believe in God? What does God even mean? What is God? Is God a person? Is God an idea? Is God an entity? And I think that was what I really wrestled with in my 20s because I ultimately had an extremely lonely path because while everyone was going out and, you know, parting their life away during college and after college, I'm going through my deepest dark nights and waking up to what the fuck I am and the fact that I'm not all these things I thought I was and shedding layers and healing things and having to cut off friends and my family doesn't understand and so on and so forth. And it's been a hell of a journey, but I, I want to paint that picture so you guys can understand that that's where I was at. Welcome to the Conscious Wealth Podcast YouTube channel. Whether you're new here or you've been rocking with us for a while and you're more of an OG, I'm sure you've noticed the unorthodox nature of the type of content that we put out on this channel and the type of content that we choose to publicly share with the world. Very shortly, I am going to reveal and answer the few key questions that are of the utmost importance for you specifically to have answered in order for you to truly connect with and become part of what we're doing here with this brand, with this mission, and ultimately our larger purpose, which we will get to. But before I do that, I need you to understand something. I am no different from you. I am not an intellectual genius. I am not particularly special. I did not grow up with unfair advantages or privileges. The only difference between me sitting here and you watching this video is that I chose to take a different path than you earlier on in my life. And if you can let that sink in as we dive into this video, I think you're going to be able to get a lot more higher level clarity as I share what I'm going to share with you. So this path that I'm referencing, this hidden path is literally 180 degrees polar opposite from the path that 99% of humans take or are even aware of. And this is why there's a 99% and there's a 1%. You see, if you want to experience an unorthodox life with unorthodox results, and experiences and an unorthodox day-to-day -day reality, you have to take an unorthodox path. You cannot follow what everyone else is doing or you're going to get the results everyone else is getting. Hopefully that's pretty easy to understand and not too controversial for me to state because that my friend, is exactly what I have done to get to where I am today. And if you're new here and you're thinking, who the hell is this guy? Who does he think he is? I will elaborate on that shortly. But before I do that, I also need you to understand. It is extremely important that you understand that there is no reality in which I was able to informally retire before the age of 30, a multi-millionaire, the first in my entire lineage. If I did not take a path that was so hidden, so secretive, so controversial, so unorthodox, that it literally felt like I was crawling through mud in the dark with a blindfold on for years, not sure if there was ever going to be any light at the end of the tunnel. And then one day you wake up and there's a light just out in the distance that you can see. The blindfold is taken off. Clarity comes flooding in. It all makes sense, but only in retrospect. And 99% of people are not willing to go through that 
but want the rewards that come from that. I want you to sit with that. This path, regardless of who you are, where you're starting from, your support system, or the knowledge that you know, is going to require everything you've got. And if you're not willing to give that to the game, you are not going to reap the rewards. On the other side, however, once you see the light, it is as if your entire life you've been looking at the world through a certain pair of shaded lenses and you just take them off. Nothing is the same after that. You will never be able to look at society, your friends, your family, the systems, education, every aspect of the human experience changes and to me that is the priceless aspect of this journey that i'm about to take you on so hopefully if you guys are my tribe you're likely resonating with and understanding what i'm speaking to you've likely had very similar experiences or are on a very similar journey but i never want to assume that and just in case if what I'm alluding to is not extremely obvious to you or seems a little bit ambiguous, what is he talking about? Allow me to elaborate who the fuck I am, where the hell I came from, and why you should care. So remember when I said we were going to reveal and answer the key few questions that are of the utmost importance for you to have answered and for you to have clarity on in order for you to get the most out of the journey that we're about to take you on. So let's start here. So I wanna go all the way back to six years old, okay? 1998. What are you doing? I'm swimming. Oh. I vividly remember being a six-year-old. I began to try to test the relationship between the unseen and the seen world. I would essentially kind of talk to God and I would tell him, if you're real, prove it to me. And I would come up with different things, different ways, right? And every single time I would do this, it would invite surreal experiences into my reality. Now, that set me on this path of self-discovery with the knowing that there are these unseen forces that we could call causes, and they govern every single thing in our lives, yet these adults that I was seeing at age six, nine, ten, they seem to only focus on and be aware of seen forces in their life, which are the effects. So we have the causes, which are occurring in the metaphysical unseen realms. And then we have the effects, which are occurring in the 3D realms. Now, this never really made sense to me. And as I went through the education system, right? elementary, middle school, then high school, I was never able to not see it for what it was. As I'm in school, I'm looking at it and it's a lot of programming. It's a lot of memorization to trap you into this worldview, this paradigm where you only honor what can be seen. You only honor what can be proved with our minuscule understanding of science and these little tools that we think we know so much about the universe and about science. And if it doesn't fit into that little agreed upon box, it's considered a conspiracy or factually incorrect. That's it. That is the worldview that as I'm growing up and as I'm coming through the education system, et cetera, never made sense to me. What's going on, guys? We wanted to interrupt this episode really quickly. Just a number one, thank you for continuing to tune in and support the show. And number two, let you know that we have finally released our free credit repair and credit optimization foundations course. This free course is for you 
If you're someone who's been consuming our content and asking yourself, how do I dip my toes into this consumer law stuff that Jeremy keeps talking about? I'm interested in learning a little bit more about this whole commerce thing, this whole debt is fraud thing, but I'm not sure where to start. If this is you and you've been enjoying the content that we've been putting out around the systems, around consumer law, around debt, around the matrix, you're definitely going to want to check out this absolutely free course. So as you can see on this landing page, just wanted to show you guys really quickly. You can find this at jgriff.org slash credit dash course. And once again, this is absolutely free guys. All you have to do is put in your name and email and click enroll now and you'll be granted. So our main focus with this is not only to teach you the foundations of what makes up your credit, but also get you started in repairing your credit and optimizing your credit. And we give you an in-depth education in everything that the school system and your parents did not teach you about credit credit literacy, how debt is used, how FICOs are determined, and we get you started with some free templates and resources to start repairing your credit today so you can put yourself in a better position and ideally start leveraging other people's money, which is one of the greatest secrets and strategies of the 1% that we're constantly trying to open people's eyes to. So here's how it's going to look when you guys are on the inside. And as you can see, we have 12 free modules for you guys. We have an intro, we go into energetics, we teach you exactly how to read a credit report and what makes up your FICO score. Then we start to get into a little bit of the juicier consumer law stuff, the FCRA codes written by Congress and how that works. Then we give you an exact play-by-play -play of how to optimize your credit for maximum funding, exactly what the banks are looking for to get yourself multiple five, six figures in funding when the time comes. We even throw in some bonus modules for you guys, exact codes to use, and we give you a free hard inquiry template to get off any hard inquiries off of your credit report that may be hindered you from being able to access your credit. So once again, guys, people are charging, you know, $500, $700 for things like this. We're giving it to you absolutely for free. All we ask is that you continue to support the show, share it with your friends, and we're happy to continue helping you guys out. This is our mission. Having said that, thank you for the support. Let's get back to the show. So I treated school like what it was helpful for some things, harmful for a lot of other things. And this allowed me to kind of never take it too seriously because I never viewed it as this is my training for life. I think I stopped viewing it like that by eighth or ninth grade. I understood this did not have anything to do with real life, that more so that this was more about like social benefits and learning habits and routines and uh, learning to develop your intellect and critical thinking a bit. But other than that, there was not a sense of this is my training for what I'm going to do in life. Never did I ever feel that way. And college was really the same. I knew that going into college, I knew I could never get a job. Now, that's an interesting experience. But what I mean by that is that I had never had a job and I knew I was never going to get a job. Not because I wouldn't qualify, because I would never sit in a chair and beg another man to be my boss to tell me when I can eat, to tell me when I can go on lunch break, to tell me the hours I'm allowed to work, to tell me what I'm worth. Never. If you let another man feed you, you're letting another man starve you and dictate when you and your family eat or not. And I was just never okay with that. So college really just gave me four more years of self-exploration, experimentation around consciousness, and I spent a lot of this time kind of internally exploring the laws of the unseen and their relation to the seen realms. To me, if you can become aware of what everyone else is unaware of in life, you win. I want you to think about that. There's not even competition at that point because you're playing chess, for example, against someone who doesn't even know the rules of the game. Further than that, they don't even know what the pieces on the board represent or the characteristics, abilities, and limitations of each of the pieces on the board represent. Imagine that for a second. You're not even remotely in the same league. You're not even speaking the same language. And I always understood this at an unconscious level and my soul would push me more and more towards prioritizing that rather than academic or making money, trading my time for money or whatever it may be. 
And for a long time, that made me a black sheep. It made me a misfit. It made me look like I was lazy or stupid or whatever it may be. But I have come to realize in retrospect that this was my soul preventing me from going the wrong path, preventing me from starting to live a life that was not aligned with why I'm here. So for whatever reason, and I can't really tell you why, this level of awareness is something that God just gifted me from a young age. This same awareness I took with me as I graduated college. So now I'm 22, graduate college, and I moved back in with my mom. I'm sure most of you know the story. Unless you're new, you can learn that on other podcast interviews I've done. So I moved back in with my mom and I enter what I call my eat shit phase, right? My live below your means, pay off debt, make something of yourself in the world, transition from being an adolescent with no responsibilities to a man with responsibilities and someone who you can be proud of when you look in the mirror. And that was a journey. And as I'm entering this phase, I already knew and understood that 99% of the rules that people were living by were complete bullshit. And to give you an example of some of those rules at that age, degrees, needing to get a degree, valuing a degree, putting your worth in a degree, etc getting a high paying job fresh out of college where they work you into the ground because you're a new kid and have to prove yourself blacking out on weekends because you're trying to cope with your lack of aliveness and real purpose and meaning in life hitting up coachella in the summer making sure that every vacation you go on is heavily documented on social media so everyone can know how amazing your superficial 3d life is and the list goes on yet you have zero awareness of what governs all of this i have nothing against enjoying life and i've certainly had different seasons and phases in which i went balls to the wall we all have a past i don't say all of that to judge It's more of sharing that for the select few of us who walk this path, which is very likely you if you gravitate to my channel, we have been called to a path that 1% of people have been called to. And that comes with unique characteristics, tendencies, repeating trends and responsibilities. Whereas 99% of people are just over here thinking about what vacation they're going to go on this summer. For most people, they have zero awareness of what governs all of this. You've never stopped to ask yourself, why am I here? What does all of this mean? Do I believe in God? What does God even mean? What is God? Is God a person? Is God an idea? Is God an entity? What is God? and actually coming to your own conclusions in this level of depth of questions. It's not that you can't enjoy those things, but it's more about having your priorities in the correct order because none of that matters. None of the 3D enjoying your meat suit time stuff matters. If you're not clear on what the fuck you're even here for, And I think that was what I really wrestled with in my 20s because I ultimately had an extremely lonely path because while everyone was going out and, you know, parting their life away during college and after college, I'm going through my deepest dark nights and waking up to what the fuck I am and the fact that I'm not all these things I thought I was and shedding layers and healing things and having to cut off friends and my family doesn't understand and so on and so forth. And it's been a hell of a journey, but I I want to paint that picture so you guys can understand that that's where I was at, at, you know, 22, 23, 24, 25. And so I enjoyed, genuinely enjoyed spending the next, let's say five years from 22, living very close to monk-like. I did three years, no dating. I would meditate one to three times a day. I would visualize my dream life every single morning. I would journal it out in depth, present tense. Then I would visualize and meditate on it and I would get myself into these states and I would see every aspect of it, every detail. You guys probably understand what I'm 
getting at with that. I was doing consistent inner work. I would work out daily. I would eat healthy. I would build my body and build my work ethic. And all of that at the same time, I'm learning the secrets of the 1%. I am constantly developing myself personally, intellectually, rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Books, YouTube, podcasts, whatever it may be, even CDs at one point, to get my hands on what the hell is all of this, what are the rules, and who has them, who can teach me them. Because what I have come to learn is that the people who actually understand the rules that govern this 3D realm, they don't tell anyone. That's why there's a 1%. And my quest, even if I didn't know it at all times, my quest is, was, and has always been to try to find out the rules that govern this realm and the rules that govern the unseen realm and figure out the relationship between those two, like I said. So for me on the financial front, on the secrets of the 1% aspect, it really started with Robert Kiyosaki at age 20. And this blew my mind open to how different the reality of the 1% was. That was the biggest takeaway there. And yet at the same time, even though so much of it was foreign and felt so far away and like it would take so long to embody, I also knew that this was just the tip of the iceberg because spiritually, I knew that if he was sharing this publicly, imagine what is actually true privately. And this sent me on a many year journey of learning everything I could about money, about wealth, about the seen and unseen realms and how they interface with one another. And once again, there is no pursuit that is more important to me. If you want my opinion and you're asking my advice, nothing is more important than figuring out things you cannot see and how they operate. If you can do that, you've just tapped into the biggest life hack there is. So while I'm doing this, I'm building my first business, which is a fitness business and then an online coaching business when I took it digital. And my first business teaches me a ton of the foundations that I needed in terms of overall money, money management, finances, wealth, and business and entrepreneurship. So I consider that like a paid internship. I did not get rich off of my first business by any means, but it was a stepping stone and it was invaluable in that sense. The issue with my first business is that it lacked the spiritual integration of who I am. In other words, who I am at a soul level was not integrated into the business. It felt like there was a disconnect between who I actually was and my life purpose, my dharma, and how I was serving people in the marketplace. Hopefully that makes sense. And that led to my second kind of spiritual awakening. And so by my second business, I had begun to integrate all of my journey that I had been on this whole time into a business offering and into kind of a, a lifestyle. And when I did that, my life would never be the same. So at this time, I'm 26, 27 years old, and I'm truly learning in real time why I had never been successful to the degree I wanted to yet. It seemed like no matter how hard I worked, no matter when one door would open, it seemed like this is my big break, it would never quite hit. And I could not figure out why because I was incredibly disciplined and good at what I did. And then it kind of dawned on me and I started to really understand why I wasn't successful yet and why God did not gift me with all of the abundance that I now have back then. And here is why. And this might be worth noting down if you're not where you want to be in life. I was not playing the game by the correct rules. I want you to think about if someone asked you to play ping pong and you did not know how to play ping pong and you said, sure, but I'm going to need you to teach me the rules. Would you ever play ping pong if you had never even seen a ping pong table racket or ball before you would have no clue what you're supposed to do, right? You would ask the rules. 
someone asked you, hey, I want you to come try out for our baseball team, and you had never heard of baseball, you would ask them the rules, right? You would probably take significant time to practice, learn all the rules, ins and outs, and then you had to build your skill up. For some reason, when it comes to life, when it comes to money especially, we don't know the rules, but all of us are playing it. I want you to think about this because this is truly fucking crazy. Every single human on earth, over 7 billion of us, in some form or another, use money on a daily basis. That means that there is no humans exempt. Now you might argue some don't, maybe it's not a fiat currency, maybe it's some form of barter or it's some form of metal coin or it's digital, whatever it may be, but those are all money. All of us are playing a game that we don't necessarily know the rules to. And in that same sense, I was going about business in a way where I was not integrating the rules of the unseen realms and aligning them with my business and the way it was operating and the principles that it was operating based on. So around this age, I'm starting to have these massive epiphanies where I'm literally just folding my old business, letting all of my clients go, announcing, you know, I'm going rogue, I'm going dark, you guys will hear from me in a number of months. And I kind of have this, you know, fork in the road type moment where I realize all of these years I had spent trying to make sense of and experimenting to learn the rules that govern the unseen realms that I keep talking about and how they relate to the seen realms, all of this kind of experiential knowledge starts pouring in and I start realizing why I've always been freakishly obsessed with something as weird and uncommon as that, it all made sense. I had been pursuing 3D money. I got caught up in the whole rat race, trying to compete, focusing and putting your worth on how much money you have. I was pursuing 3D money before, and that's why I wasn't successful in my first business and then I pivoted it to online. It never was what I wanted it to be because I was not playing by the correct rules. So this was huge for me and I dropped all of that and I got incredibly clear on my entire life's journey. I remember sitting down and going back through as much as I could as if I was writing my own autobiography essentially. I was trying to make meaning of my own life. And if you've never done this, this is one of the most helpful self-awareness exercises you will ever do in your entire life. Write your own autobiography from present day and you will see how much clarity you have now looking back, right? They say hindsight is 2020. So I'm doing that and I'm realizing that everything I had been through was for a reason. It was teaching me something and I couldn't see it at the time but it was preparing me for what was about to happen. And all of a sudden, when I unlock this gem that I just gave you, and I realize why that had happened, why it took five years to barely be where I was, then it was like, oh, okay. It was as if I had been riding a bicycle from 22 to 27. And then at 27, I got off the bicycle and I got into a rocket ship. That was the difference in speed of my 3D reality. Now, I now understand that that was because I was kind of in the cocoon phase and I had so much to build and I had so much karmic debris to work through and you know, we're all running our own race and for whatever reason, that was what my soul needed to experience. But at 27, I was finally ready and my life reflected that. All of a sudden, at that same time, that I, you know, step into this incredibly aligned business and I drop the fitness stuff and my financial reality starts really picking up. At that same time, I start to gain access to a lot of this deeper hidden financial knowledge in the realms of wealth and asset protection and all that type of stuff that I had been trying to manifest. I was literally praying for and trying to manifest coming across this type of knowledge that I wasn't sure 
if it even really existed, but I, I, part of me knew. And it was really a full circle moment because I'm 27 at that time. And at 20 is when I came across Robert Kiyosaki and knew that there was more. It took that long for it to come full circle and for me to really advance to that next level of hidden knowledge. I started to really understand how all of the conspiracies that I was uh, learning about that I used to love to learn about and dive into for many, many years by this time, probably, you know, I'm 10 years into that type of stuff at that time. It had never dawned on me that my spiritual journey, my conspiratorial hobby essentially is what it was, pastime, and wealth and finances were at all connected. Now that might sound funny because I now have the Conscious Wealth brand and everything that we're doing is around bridging consciousness and wealth, but I'm telling you that it never once crossed my mind, nor did I even know that that was the case until this age. That's how pivotal this realization was. And it wasn't obvious at first, but what I learned was that the same way there are unseen forces that govern the seen realm, right? Cause and effect. And if you can learn those, you literally win at life because you're no longer kind of going through life with a blindfold on, playing the victim card. Oh, woe is me. Why does this happen to me? And you don't understand that you're literally creating your entire reality and all of your suffering is you. That same understanding applies to money and wealth. And here's how that works. Money is just an agreed upon idea. Wealth is not something that can be seen. Now you might be thinking like, yeah, you can see money, Jeremy, you can touch it. No, money just represents something. There is no value in fiat debt notes. We talk about that all the time. So if you really go deeper and you really meditate on this stuff and you really learn about money, the history of money and all of that, it's just an idea. That's the only thing that gives it value. And so if you understand that wealth cannot actually be seen, this is when my life changed forever. This is the most pivotal turning point on my entire journey, at least financially speaking. In the same way that unseen forces dictate all of the rules of the 3D material world, unseen forces dictate all of our results or lack thereof when it comes to our finances and our wealth. I want you to think about that. Maybe it's not that you're not worthy. Maybe it's not that you're stupid. Maybe it's not that you didn't go to the right school or you weren't born into the same family. Maybe that's all just cope. Maybe it's simply that you don't know the unseen forces that govern the rules of money and wealth in the third dimension. In other words, the reason that there is a 99% and a 1% when it comes to wealth is not as simple as just saying that's because there's corruption. That's because of mass inequality. That's partially true. Inequality in terms of knowing the rules, there's a massive inequality discrepancy. Those who are the haves that know the rules and the have-nots that don't know the rules because we're all playing the game, guys. All almost 8 billion of us are playing a game that 1% of people know the rules to. There's a reason why all of these occult societies and these conspiratorial groups that run the world that I'm not gonna say here so we don't get shadow banned, but if you know, you know, there's a reason why they're all obsessed with different metaphysics. They all are ritualistic. They're all obsessed with the spiritual realms. They don't necessarily pray to the most high and they're not necessarily on God's good side and light workers, but they know damn well that the esoteric, the occult and all of that is very real. Those are the same people that are the wealthiest. I want you to think about that. That is because you have to understand and master the unseen realms. And if you can do that the same way you become very powerful spiritually, you apply that same thing to wealth and money and you can have whatever you want in this third dimension. There is no longer any limitation to 
For example, if I happen to want to become a billionaire in this lifetime, I know that I could do that. It's not necessarily currently a desire for me, but once you understand and unlock the rules, you understand that all of this stuff is honestly not nearly as hard as you think and it's kind of superficial. There's a lot of other things that bring more meaning in life. For example, like understanding the rules and mastering the unseen realm. So I'm realizing at this time that this whole 99% and 1% thing wasn't as simple as I was making it out to be because of the programming I had received. I'm starting to realize that there's a 1% because the 1% understands and is aware of the hidden rules when it comes to money, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to asset protection, when it comes to tax sheltering, when it comes to loopholes, when it comes to law. And this was my first kind of opening up to this whole realm that is now what you could call, I guess, the sovereignty space and starting to educate myself when it comes to the law pieces and starting to realize that the rabbit hole went even deeper than my conspiratorial younger self thought. Because I knew, I always just kind of said, oh, money, there's so much corruption in that with politics and big business and pharma, but it's way deeper than that. And also a lot simpler than that. So this age is when I realize and decide, okay, I'm no longer gonna be this poor hippie who's blaming big B business and pharma for wealth inequality. I'm going to master these rules. I'm going to master these laws and I'm gonna combine and align the spiritual, unseen, metaphysical, esoteric realms, rules and governings with the 3D realm as it pertains to law, understanding and having a deep knowledge when it comes to wealth and asset protection and tax loopholes and combining those two and ultimately it eventually became what I now do, but I still had no idea I was ever going to do that at this age. So this is really when my highest calling appears right before my eyes and I, I could never see it before then. My calling is kind of bestowed upon me and it sounds a little something like this. To illuminate what the rules to the game actually are of wealth. And that's more than money because in order to be wealthy, you have to master the unseen forces. So it's, it's a lot deeper than just money. And that is where my deeper purpose really clicks and solidifies and everything, all the bullshit from the last 10 years makes sense. And it all had a purpose and a meaning. And the reason that this was such a strong calling for me, I think the easiest way to explain it is by referencing Hosea 4, 6. Our people perish for lack of knowledge. It's all over scripture. It's very, very clear. If you don't know the rules to the game, you will perish. And it really crystallized around this time in my journey that it was time for me to help people with the rules of the game so that they do not perish while they're in the third dimension in this life. And so our brand's mission and our why comes from my life experiences. This is not some business plan. This is not some quick money grab. This is my life we're talking about. This is my journey that I've been on a lot of times. Like I said, I was not the one writing the book. The book was writing me. It wasn't until I got into my late, late 20s and now in my early 30s that I'm writing the book, but I had to learn a lot and go through a lot with a blindfold on because I didn't know the rules that govern the unseen realm. And so it is exactly like that. It is like trying to traverse your way through a foreign territory with a blindfold on because you don't know the rules. You don't have awareness. You don't understand what the hell is going on or what is possible, what is not possible, what is realistic, what is not realistic and all of these types of things. But through that journey, eventually, if you don't give up and you really master self, you get to a point where you understand the rules of the unseen and the seen realms, 
and now you've mastered the 5D and you've mastered the 3D. You understand the kingdom internally, the creator. You're a servant of God, the most high, heavily protected, highly favored. No weapon shall form against me. And at the same time, you get to have fun in the 3D, in your meat suit, balling out, having nice things, enjoying your human experience. And that to me is heaven on earth. And that is what we're here to do. That is what our brand is about. And that is what we are about to unleash on the world when it comes to our content and what is coming very soon. We have been putting immense work building out an entire team and an infrastructure to be able to really scale this message to you guys for free on a consistent basis so that you guys, your friends, your loved ones, your family, your kids, whatever it may be, have programming free alternatives to mainstream media or to whatever you're watching on YouTube or Netflix or whatever it may be to consume and educate and empower yourself and also help spiritually evolve you and your loved ones. So this has really become my life's work to educate and empower millions on not only the hidden rules of money and wealth, but also how to play the damn game and play it well. But at a more zoomed out level, to share what I've learned about the inner workings of the unseen realms, taking you guys behind the veil that has been pulled out in front of so many of our eyes. It's as if before we're born, we have complete and all knowing awareness and we are just a soul. And then as soon as we incarnate into the human experience, it's as if we're born with amnesia and the spiritual journey of being human is to wake up Neo, as they say in the matrix. It is to wake up from the dream. It is to remember who the fuck you are and why you're here. And the catch 22 is that at that same time you're born with amnesia, you're popped into this conveyor belt where from zero to age 18, you have 18 plus years of programming and before that's even complete, we don't stand a chance of seeing outside of the seen world. What do I mean by that? It means that your attention is so fixated by the time you're an adult on the outside world, the outside world, the outside world, what you can see, what you can see, what you can see, that you don't ever even stop to realize or think about that maybe there's a prerequisite, maybe there's a cause, maybe there's a catalyst that dictates everything you're so focused on in the scene realm and you're over here trying to manipulate the material scene superficial shallow world and you haven't paid any mind to what actually creates all of this because it's behind a veil. It is hidden because you can't see it with your senses. You can't touch it. In other words, we get conditioned into our senses, but there is so much more that is dictating everything that happens in your 3D reality. And if we can begin to live in greater alignment with this knowing and play the game well, you can literally create whatever you want in this third dimension reality. It's just a video game. And the same way you can do whatever you want in the video game if you're good enough, if your skill is at that level and you know the right rules, life is no different in this third dimension. Most people just haven't cracked the code of learning all of the rules that govern the unseen realms and so they just hang out in victim consciousness acting like random events and coincidences continue to happen in their lives and we know that not to be true metaphysically and so really this is how i've gotten where i am guys i bet this is not the trajectory you expected this video to go in but this is the full truth that i've never really shared at this level of depth publicly. Nothing changed until I started playing the game well. That's one of the most important things you need to understand. And so as you reflect on your current situation, I need you to understand nothing will change until you change the rules you're playing by. 
But first, you have to actually learn those rules and you have to master those rules. And that's the challenge for a lot of people. So as we wrap this video up, guys, I want to share how you guys can come along for the ride that we're about to take you on. Join us and how you guys can support our efforts in getting this message out to millions of people because God knows we need it as a society right now. As this world is going through a huge awakening, I don't believe there to be any stronger mission than what we're putting out. It is my life's work. We don't make a penny off of any of this. We don't monetize with ads. We don't bother you guys having to watch an ad and skip it every 15 minutes because we're getting Google ad spend. We don't do any of that. All we ask is that you guys help us spread the message and support. That is the law of reciprocity, talking about unseen realms, right? One of the laws that govern the universe is the law of reciprocity. So in us giving so freely of so much value and changing so many of your lives and trying to help you, your friends, your families, all we ask is that you guys help us so that we can better help you. There are three main ways that you guys can do that. Number one, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. I'm sure most of you are, but if you're newer here, we have just started putting out weekly content that is going to continue indefinitely from here on out. We have officially built the systems, the team, the infrastructure to be able to handle at scale, putting out content as if we were a media company. So you guys can support us by number one, subscribing to the channel. And then number two, make sure that you have YouTube notifications on by clicking the bell that's usually in the corner of your screen when you're watching one of our videos or when you're on our actual YouTube channel. This is gonna allow you to be notified when we do post new videos. And guys, this one is extremely important, so please do this if you appreciate our content. Reason being, a lot of our better and most important topics are going to get shadow banned because the algorithm does not want you to know about these things, right? I don't think I have to explain that to you. So by turning on the notification bell, you will be notified when we drop a new video because sometimes we're gonna release stuff and it's not ever gonna get shown to you because of the sheer depth of what we're sharing publicly. And number three, please make sure to like this video, comment below and give us any, uh, any of your feedback. We're always open to feedback, what you appreciated, what your biggest takeaway was, whatever it may be. And then also sharing this with your friends and family. This is one of the most important things that you guys can do. A lot of us are waking up to this notion that, huh, maybe I wrote off money and I need to reestablish a healthier, spiritually integrated relationship with money. Our content is for you. And then lastly, of course, we teach all of this and a lot more things I can't say publicly or I'll get sniped in our private community, the Level Up Collective. You guys can check that out in the description below or you can go to jgriff.org. I will say we are very selective with who we accept for that, but um, I did want to drop that because of course, we don't just have free public content. The brand and our public media is different from our private community where we're much more results focused rather than just generally education focused. That's all as far as how you can support us guys. Thank you so much if you watched this entire video. I wish you all nothing but continued abundance, healing, peace, and love, and I hope to see you in the next video.